Thank you and have a great session. Great, right, thank you, Sam. Really appreciate all of the hard work of the Open Education Committee to pull this thing together. It's really quite amazing. And I'm gonna um, <clears throat> ask him to share the slides and to help kind of work that today. Cause we have a, we have a bunch of folks presenting here today. Uh, there should be nine or 10 of us all together. And we wanted to do that to give you a broad representation of the voices that have been part of the Arlo Network, which is the regional leaders of open education. You can see our logo here and on the slide. And that Arlo is a, a project under the CCC OER, which of course is part of OE Global. And today's talk uh, is about focusing on marginalized communities and promoting systemic change for open education, which is which is largely what Arlo is about. And you can see the presenters listed here and, and um, I'm gonna have them each, they'll each sort of um, be introduced as we go along here. So on the, on the next slide, um, which I know Kim's gonna forward for us, <laughs> we have a number of people that are engaged in Arlo, our leadership team, uh, consists of a bunch of folks, um, some of whom are here today. Carlos Gallier is here, as well as Rebecca Vasquez Ortiz um, and Kim Gruy uh, and myself and a few other folks here. Uh, Robin's actually here, but not speaking today. <laughs> and uh, a couple of other folks, Deidre Tyler and Esperanza Sinan, as well as Tiffany Tang, do a lot for our team. Um, along with the leadership team, we have, a, we have nine different collaborators, many of whom you'll probably recognize, and a couple of whom are here today, Alegria Ribadineria, as well as Mar Mari Sakiyama. Um, and so all these other folks have been really working closely with us and our participants in Arlo, and I wanted to just give them all a shout out as well. And on the next slide, we have had also a team of fabulous students that act as mentors for staff and faculty. Uh, so our students do a lot for um, engaging in the work and helping to guide us in our work. And so we have Elizabeth Bratz, who's here speaking today, um, as well as these other amazing folks that have been part of the Barlow Network as we uh, go along. And so again, in addition to the leadership advisory team, the collaborators and the students, we have a number of participants. So go ahead, Kim, you can put that slide up there. And um, I'm going to let Carlos uh, take it from here. Thank you. And I, I wanted to thank Arlo for being such a supportive network. And as you can see in this map, it's a map of the US, Canada, Mexico, and we have participants over three cohorts from 66 institutions, two Canadian provinces, 29 US states, 101 participants, often teams from different institutions. And they are spread all over the country, represent a different career paths, different uh, institution types. And what's really neat is that they work together to rethink and reimagine how we can make our open strategic plans so that we can learn from each other and reinvigorate our campus efforts to make open and open educational practices more welcoming for all. On the next slide, you'll see our philosophy, the Arlo Network is really built from lead from the middle. And I love this and how we learned from Karen and Arlo and the Arlo uh, facilitators, how we can really build a community where leadership is not top down, but from the middle and helps everyone bring their best experience, bring their knowledge and share. And that goes along with the second point, which is focus on perspective shifting uh, so that marginalized communities are represented, have voice and have uh, perspectives not only are present, but are co deeply considered because after all, our goal is to really help all underserved students and help institutions re think their plans for open education. 
Uh, Arlo Network, the third point, supports leaders to build their strategic plans at their institutions. And this requires rethinking our priorities and how we can align with other institutions that are part of this and other networks. We've had um, statewide education systems um, participate as Arlo participants to think about how they will broaden their impact in Tennessee, for example, or consortia of community colleges or librarians to rethink how their strategic plans are best served. And the goal here is to build a diverse human network and create conditions for inclusion of diverse voices. Next slide. Yes, and um, these are the components of the Arlo Network, and I'd like to emphasize that we really focus on the people and the connections, so that um, here you see the Arlo Leadership Program. That's a three-week intensive program with asynchronous and synchronous components, and that brings educators together to lead from the middle, as Carlos had said, and to provide a lot of support and ideas for creating those open education strategic plans. And that, that's the crux of um, what we try to help leaders do, and that is create uh, strategic plans, open education strategic plans that they can implement at their institutions so that they can make that change. And then um, con continuing with the idea of people, we, we focus on students as leaders and mentors, and we use uh, their experiences and, uh, and what they contribute to uh, support us and to help us uh, make our plans. The UnWebinars are also driven by uh, the people in the, in the program, and these are um, on topics that uh, are crowdsourced or generated by the participants in the program. And these supportive collaborations that you see, the collaborators that Karen mentioned, we provide that ongoing support, not just during that three-week intensive program, but throughout the process of trying to implement those strategic plans at the institutional level. And finally, OEG Connect is that asynchronous platform that we use to try to keep people connected across uh, time and space uh, in this program. I introduce Rebecca Vasquez Ortiz now, who's going to take it from here. Thank you, thank Rebecca. you so much, Karen, and thank you everybody for um, for being with us today. Uh, I just uh, I wanted to take a moment to talk about um, what it really means as uh, for me as a leader um, on this team, um, and you know, again, centering the idea that we're leading from the middle. And I just wanted to reflect for a moment on my own experiences as um, a, a woman of color uh, from uh, the state of California and how much um, activism in my state has been highly influenced by um, the field of agriculture. And I remember as a young person uh, hearing Cesar Chavez speak and, and more recently before I joined Arlo, I had the opportunity to attend a session with Dolores Huerta and um, all of my, uh, time in higher education, I, I always held at my center the idea that I wanted to help students and work hard. But most of the time, I never really felt like I was a leader. And um, it wasn't until I heard Dolores Huerta remind me that being a leader means doing the work that I realized, wow, I have really been working for 30 years. And then I met Arlo and I realized I was a leader. Um, because in many spaces, I didn't feel that a person like me could be this type of leader. And since I joined the network, I've had incredible um, um, opportunities to bridge with other women of color across um, Turtle Island. And so it's been really a, a space for me to share, to learn, and to collaborate. And many other spaces I have been in across my years in higher ed were not that way. And so... Um, it's just been something that has been connected to who I am as a communal learner and contributor. And I just wanted to share that uh, the creation of spaces and the maintenance of spaces for people with diverse voices like mine has, has really uh, been paramount in the work with Arlo. And I just look forward to being able to continue um, to hold this space of influence for other younger students who look to me as, uh, as a role model. And then with that, I, I have the pleasure of introducing um, Mari Sakiyama, who's also here on, 
on the Western coast, uh, but further north to speak to you about her experiences and what it means to be a contributor to the Arlo Network. Go ahead, Mari. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, my name is Mari. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in criminal justice department at Western Oregon University. And just to briefly share my background, I came to the country as an international student from Japan. So as I was going through uh, my education and professional career, as uh, Rebecca said, I, I never really felt like I was fit in. So, um, but at the meanwhile, um, as I was going to uh, professional world as a professor, I have also encountered many students who consider themselves as unfit um, because the, of the struggles that they were going through at the time. And I've met homeless students, students with immigration status issues, um, along with the incarcerated students, um, given that my discipline is, again, is in criminal justice. Um, justice. And um, I have to be honest that I, I am really still new to uh, OER. Um, I have been working on revise and remix product of a substance abuse course at my own institution. Um, and um, But at the same time, I had a privilege to be part of uh, OER, uh, Arlo as a collaborator. And like I said, because I am and I was new to OER, I felt really overwhelmed by how much others came into the table with their experience and knowledge. And even my assigned participants from each cohort were far more experienced and knowledge. Um, uh, and I actually ended up learning more from them, but none of them uh, didn't make me feel like I'm an outsider or unfit for that matter. Despite there was a structural leadership from leaders to collaborators to participants and students, everybody's idea in this group and, and voices were heard um, and always valued with a strong foundation of deep understanding and empathy. Um, it was certainly a great wake up call for me and uh, it I was able to push a reset button to make me realize why I do what I do as an educator. As a criminal justice professor, there was an error in American policing history in which the police focused on the professionalism and, and enhancing officer education within the centralized structure that's more of a top-down military-like structure. And that era basically did not last long due to increasing crime concerns and fear of crime among residents because they did not incorporate the voices of the community who are experts of their issues. So leading from the middle, uh, what Arlo taught me basically lies within the decentralized and organic community with the ability to hear uh, voices from a marginalized community and incorporate those and implement those into their daily practices. So Arlo made me realize again that we are the community that can make changes to transform higher education to a better place. In that regards, I would like to pass it on to Adeguria, another uh, great collaborator. Thank you so much, Mari. I really appreciate passing you uh, passing me the baton. Uh, hello, my name is Alegria Rivadeneira. I'm distinguished professor at Colorado State University in Pueblo. We, uh, Colorado, <laughs> for those of you who wouldn't know that. Uh, we are a regional comprehensive university and a Hispanic serving institution. So um, I found my way to Arlo because somebody recommended me to the group so I would become a collaborator. And I thought, me, what am I going to do for this group? And I have to tell you that Arlo inspired me, supported me, and motivated me. So then I could in turn do that for our participants. Um, Arlo let me know that my experience is valuable, that the knowledge and perspective that I have matters, and that I have a circle of influence, whether it's big or small. And then I could in turn do that for the participants, let them know that their experience is valuable, that their knowledge and perspective matters, and that they have a circle of influence. So in other words, Arlo helped me become aware of my power to take on agendas to help the underserved through open. And I in turn help others become aware of their power so they can take on agendas and help 
the underserved through open. I have a great story I'm gonna share with you. Uh, it, to me, this is a story of empowerment. So at my institution, our bookstore has this sweet lady who takes textbook orders from her little dark office surrounded by stacks of books. She is so quiet and kind. She keeps her head down and she waits for faculty to place the textbook orders. And those come in a variety of ways emails or these little pink sheets that she sends out in hopes that people will fill them. She has no idea that she can instill change to this antiquated system of book ordering. She, she has no idea of the power she has to make a difference in open because she holds so much valuable information and no one has ever empowered her to lead change. So, she only knows about commercial textbooks because those using OER usually don't use uh, the system that she has instilled. So I called a meeting in which for the first time she realizes how she could help open and what she could do. Long story short, we're gonna be piloting a new system of book ordering in four departments at our university. And the hopes is to find out not only who's using open OER, but also what other textbooks are being used. And this is the great thing. When we know that, we'll be able to target those people to see if we can find OER for them as well. So um, this, I think, is a great story of how Arlo inspires us to lead from the middle. And I now move the baton to Maribel. Good morning, everyone. Well, talking about the strategic plan that uh, we're doing at the college that I work for, uh, it's, it is a, at a very early stage because we're barely starting, we're barely moving uh, forward into promoting uh, with faculty and see who wants to join and who is um, just providing the information. But um, there's a lot of challenges because, first of all, the college is providing free textbooks and also some faculty own their own textbooks that are providing for the students. So it is a very challenging because um, some faculty do not see that that open education can be a need or an immediate need. But um, eventually it's going to be because once the, the funds run out, it's gonna be a great need for students to get free textbooks. And this, um, so that's, those are the challenges that uh, we're having um, as part of the strategic plan um, in the college that I work. And I come from a community of, of underserved um, community. So I know the importance of, uh, of the financial importance to pay for uh, textbooks and and any other expenses for education. So now that I am um, an instructor in Spanish at this um, institution, I find very, very important and crucial for the students to to um, get um, help to pay the, for the classes, but also the most important part is to be able to get access to textbooks and textbooks that are of real cost or very low cost, which is the, what open education is about. So I, I find very, very challenging sometimes, but I find that Arlo is a group that um, Sometimes I feel very discouraged because I have to take extra assignments so I can make my salary and provide for my family. So sometimes time it's um, a struggle. Financial um, side is a struggle for me, but sometimes uh, I just postpone what I'm planning to do. And when I get, get back to the group here at Arlo, um, I get very motivated and I get uh, back in my feet and on my feet and say, you know what, I can still do this. And I just, um, and knowing the importance of promoting and helping my students the way that I wish I could, um, were um, able to other faculty to help me when I was a student, I found it very, very, but um, very important. So this group, it's amazing because uh, it provides a lot of support 
especially for um, people like me, like me being an agent um, instructor. Um, sometimes you just need uh, the support. You need uh, you need to get the message that you are able to make a change um, and and just continue moving and promoting the the open education resources. So that it's um, about me. I'm going to pass it to Susel Molina. Thank you, Maribel. What a trailblazer you are. Uh, my name is Susel Molina. Uh, I'm a professor at Palo Alto College. Uh, Dr. Melissa Elston and I uh, participated in the um, Arlo Summer 2022 cohort. What a blessing that was. Um, Arlo helped us bring clarity to our open education initiative. Palo Alto College is, is not new to open education, um, but Arlo helped us get it right. And um, Palo Alto uh, is open education is just peppered all over our college. And um, we feel like um, sometimes like any recipe, you, it, you may think it tastes good, but um, Arlo actually brought the spice that we needed. And we have several professional development courses uh, and that's the core of how we um, empower faculty to uh, receive uh, the information that they need. The first course is introduction to OER. The second course is OER for the zealot and our new course is OER for publication. So we're moving in a new direction. Our direction is research informed instruction and cultural responsive materials. And I'd like to go ahead and pass that on to my colleague, Nisha. Um, I think Arlo um, is just fantastic, you know. Uh, you can feel the energy and the passion, like words cannot describe, um, uh, the climate and the energy which is uh, created and the passion which is passed to all of us, I think. Manisha Nitsigasun, Notavi Pan Balvan, Nigavi Bimla, Nita Toskan, Masnaigan Kamik, Maskochi's Cultural College, Mistahi Ninanaska Montamatis, so in Emikosia. I on purpose introduced myself in plain Scree Y dialect, where this is the language spoken um, in Maskochi's. Muscochis is a reserve, a reservation in Alberta. It's only an hour away from Edmonton. I'm an employee of the Muscochis Cultural College and um, I would like to share some of the points. Um, of one, Arlo is the only place where you can find um, these strategic plans for different types of organizations. We all are of different sizes, but you can see there is no other open repository or a resource where you can go and pick up these uh, ideas. Um, uh, with the help of Arlo, um, student authorship for indigenous knowledge is so important. We are taking the open textbooks such as physical uh, geology and our professors are creating ancillary materials. And our students as authors are interviewing elders and they're adding the indigenous component. Um, and this is a form of relational sustainability. We speak about, you know, how can open education resources be updated, adapted on an ongoing basis? Uh, the key is relational sustainability. You know, sustainability by itself does not mean anything. Relational sustainability by engaging our students and our faculty to meet together and reusable assignments. So these are not just authentic assignments. These are our students' website. These are their open portfolios that we marginalized oppressed people on the reserve, um, you know, our, um, we have the intellectual capacity and the knowledge. This is our showcase to the world. Uh, indigenous language is important. That's why I introduced myself in plain screen, um, Y dialect. With Arlo's help, uh, not only did I get funding and I was connected to Save the Children Canada and Book Dreams to produce indigenous children's books. And one more exciting project is we are partnering with Digital Library in Norway. It's a children's digital library. Um, and our 
uh, one of our free, um, fluent Greek speakers class, Linguistics 3500, are using it as a reusable assignment where they're translating these books in the Plains Greek language. Um, so that's, that's another um, resource um, I got connected with uh, because of Arlo. Finally, I want to share an uh, example of indigenous OERs. Um, we created a, a guide, an annotated guide, which can be used as examples. Uh, we created it for our faculty so they can understand and see the examples. You know, many a time students show us, tell us, show me, like, give me an example. So we picked up uh, a beautiful assortment of different fruits, um, or you can call it spices of different colors. If you need iron, we have um, all these beautiful OERs. And we also, when we created this annotated guide on purpose, we looked at the um, teams which were working together. Um, were there elders, indigenous authors, non-indigenous authors? What were the different skill sets each one was bringing together? Um, so thank you so much. And I'd like to pass it to, uh, I'll pass it back to Karen. Thank you. Exe, hi, hi, hi. Thank you, Manisha. I, I wanna introduce Elizabeth Bratz, who's a recently graduated student at Western Oregon University and one of our fabulous mentors and keynote speaker for our summit in Boston. So take it away, Elizabeth. Hi everyone, um, my name is Elizabeth Bratz um, and I am currently a graduate student at Portland State University studying uh, public policy. Um, so I begin by telling uh, my journey with Arlo and I, um, I joined them about, I would say close to two years ago. Um, and so I usually start by telling uh, kind of my background of, I, I did not really know what open education was. Um, and I think that is really a testament to the lack of access and implementation of open education resources and services in higher education, and um, as well as students' knowledge of that. And so higher education um, has historically and systemically um, and, and, and generationally been a place that includes the majority um, while intentionally excluding the minority. Um, but we continue to see communities of color rise above of um, society's false standards, um, and they pursue a higher education. Um, however, the resistance for communities of color um, come at a great cost. Um, as an undergraduate at Western Oregon University, um, it nearly cost me $100,000 to get my degree, and that did not include my textbooks. Um, but I was fortunate to have scholarships and opportunities um, to work in positions that heavily compensated for, for example. Um, so, however, my good fortune um, consisted of luck, um, work, and persistence. Um, students of color and underrepresented students face the mental, physical, emotional, and financial burden that is a continuation of the, of the stories and um, of the history and the trauma and, and, and the legacies of our ancestors and our relatives and our families. And so students of color and underrepresented students um, statistically face endless disadvantages and barriers uh, within higher education, uh, whether it's food insecurity, um, inability to get basic needs, housing insecurity, um, and with the continuous increase in the cost of living, students are not thriving in higher education, they are merely surviving. But open education resources give students the ability to save money, redirect their money to basic needs, monthly bills, as well as gain valuable skills in leadership, technology literacy, advocacy, teamwork, and agency. And so open resources is a, is a multifaceted uh, platform that I believe can and will revolutionize education around the world. Um, and as a student who has used, utilized open education resources, um, I have seen the impacts it continues to have for students. Um, and I do not say it lightly that it has saved students' lives. Um, I believe that in order for higher education institutions to become representative, um, a representative space for all, we must decolonize the institutions entirely and revolutionize education. And I believe that starts with the voices and the experiences um, and the history of all minority uh, communities and systematically oppressed communities in this nation. And I know that the systemic shift in higher education can and will begin with open education. Um, as a woman that is, um, I, I'm Black, I'm Hispanic, I'm Indigenous, and I'm also a 
proud gay women um, in the communities that I represent, I must emphasize that we are all indebted to the sacrifices and the knowledge and education that communities of color and underrepresented communities have provided us. Um, it's not just imperative, it is necessary uh, to put students of color and underrepresented students at the forefront of this revolution, because it is not until we fight and advocate and uplift the oppressed that we can truly say and believe in liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. You're, you're always amazing. I love listening to you. I know we only just have a few minutes left. And I also noticed that Esperanza Zenon is here and I'm gonna ad lib with the group a little bit too. And I'm gonna go over briefly some highlights for what we hope will be a phase three for Arlo. But after I'm done that, I'm putting Esperanza on notice because I'm gonna ask her to summarize what Arlo has meant to her <laughs> after I finish this as well. Um, one of the things that we wanna do in the future um, is to focus beyond planning towards implementation and really thinking about outcomes for student learning, retention, and success. And on the, the next uh, bullet point there, Kim, I think you can forward that uh, slide should have. <laughs> yeah, supporting institutions to conduct research on the effectiveness of their open ed strategies, creating partnerships with other organizations and programs that are focused on social justice and open ed, such as RIOS, the uh, Institute for Racially Just, Inclusive, and Open STEM. See Carlos giving a heads up here. Expanding our student participation in numbers and depth of involvement. And, um, and finally, we, we really want to think about deepening our context of North America to really include not just Canada in the US, like we have involved now, but to include Mexico in a broad understanding and connection of these global connections and how North America is situated across these, these three countries. Um, so I know we just have a few minutes left, and I also want to leave time for questions, but I'm going to I'm going to give Esperanza ask Esperanza to speak for one minute and then we'll uh, well, then we'll take we'll take it to the audience to ask us anything. Uh, thank you, Karen, and uh, I'm very, very happy to be here uh, today. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I could join in. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be part of Arlo because it has really helped me to grow as as a leader um, and and really embrace this idea of leading from the middle and and the idea that those people who are doing the work uh, can can honestly consider themselves leaders no matter what level that work entails uh, whether you're starting out or in the middle or you know you've you've managed to have some success with oer um, you can consider yourself a leader in this in this arena, uh, and and this has been a an, a really learning experience. I've, and and the bonds that I've uh, you know, established with all of the beautiful people who are part of Arlo has really enriched um, you know my life and my experience, and helped me to realize that you know le leaders don't have a certain uh, mold that they come out of, you know? Um, we all are, are leaders in some capacity, uh, it, you know, with the work that we do or in our lives. Um, you know, I've said that um, the beauty of Arlo is that while it looks like we're doing things, um, you know, in the, on paper or, you know, these presentations where we share ideas, what we're really doing is trying to reach deep into people's minds and hearts and help them to realize um, the value of everyone's voice. And that's an incredible gift to have and to be able to share. And so, um, you know, as I say quite often, uh, this has been one of the most enriching experiences uh, in my you know, professional and personal life. Uh, and, and I'm just truly grateful. Um, yeah, y'all can't see my background, but I'm actually uh, at the hospital right now. I'm standing. I, I went in the bathroom and shut the door <laughs> so I could so I could be quiet and not wake my daughter. She's a uh, she's uh, sleeping now. We're about to have a have a grandbaby here shortly. So uh, I'm glad that I could step away for a minute and, and engage with you guys. But uh, you know, I got some uh, as we say, some real other serious fish to fry. <laughs> 
Thank you, Esperanza. Like that's fabulous. And it's fabulous dedication that you're you're here in spite of all the things that are going on for you right now. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to I want to thank all of our presenters. Um, uh, anyone, we have five minutes left. I'd love to hear from folks in the audience. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to turn on your camera and mic and speak and be with us. Um, type things in the chat, anything uh, that you would like to add. While we're waiting, uh, we can uh, see if there, anybody else on the panel here would like to add something or wrap up comment, uh, Rebecca. Karen, actually, there was a, a bit of a question. I think it's from oh. Tammy. That okay, says, maybe I missed um, it. She was, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sorry, I must have missed that, that question. Yeah, that Tammy was asking Alegria uh, about um, uh, her three points. And the first, the third was a circle of influence. But she wanted to know if anybody had uh, made made a note of the first two major points that Alegria had spoke spoke to. She, I think she typed them in the chat. But go ahead, Alegria. Talk, uh, okay, talk about would, them again because they're amazing. Add, yeah, that, that our experience is valuable and that our knowledge and perspective matters along that with that we have a circle of influence. You know, basically, I think what we've all been saying that our voices matter and wherever we are in whatever little corner of the world we are, we can lead little changes, big changes, all kinds of changes. And on another side note, I can't believe we're going to have an Arlo baby. We all get to be aunties and uncles <laughs> now. I love it. This is the most amazing supportive group. I agree with Esperanza that um, I've ever come across. I've never even met them in person. And I love them so deeply, you could not even imagine. So I am so fortunate to be part of this. And I know we all feel the same way. Thank you. Great. And, 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 and I know, you know Kim. I hit you up for some Christmas gifts for the baby now. You volunteer in this all. Well. Everybody in here. <laughs> Kim had put arlo.org in the chat. I'm just repeating it there. If you want to find out more about the nuts and bolts of our program, uh, more things we're hoping to continue into a third phase. We're not we're not sure what's going to happen next year as we're looking towards more funding, but I think we're going to be able to be positive to say, join our network um, and we'll be able to uh, re recruit others that are interested in being part of this network. So any anybody else want to add another comment or question? Thank you, Kathy. Kathy Germano is here today. Also another incredible participant in the Arlo Network, as well as others. And I don't know, Sam, if we're out of time. We have two minutes. And you, of course, are welcome to stick around after if you'd like to chat. Um, but I, this was a great presentation, and I love the work that you guys are doing. Y'all are amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we're definitely, I know I'll stick around. Maybe some of the panel here will be able to stick around for anybody that's interested and wants to talk in a little bit of a smaller group. I know it can be uh, more intimidating in a large <laughs> Zoom room uh, to, to speak. So we're going to hang out and we'd love to chat with you more about our work. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to this amazing Arlo team. I'm grateful for you every single day. And um, what, a, what a great panel we had here today. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now and I'm going to make you host Karen and then that way you can handle the rest of the ses session. Okay, perfect. Thank you.